Uh, hi guys, welcome back to uh, Irfan's Homestead. I'm Irfan and you are joining me for day 7 of egg candling. Uh, so we're going to candle the 3 eggs that are germinating. I'm quite excited to see the embryo development uh, thus far. And um, also, uh, something interesting, I ordered quail eggs but like fertile quail, quail eggs so i ordered about 30 of them quite excited for them to arrive they haven't arrived as yet but i will keep you guys posted and updated and i will show you guys the eggs as soon as they arrive um i haven't built an automatic egg turner as yet uh, nor have i built out a hatching tray or incubation tray for the quail eggs specifically for quail eggs i was planning on doing that but um, I will have to stall because I'm stuck between choosing hardware cloth or chicken mesh as the base for the tray. Uh, of course, the chicken mesh would allow you to for all the eggs to stand upright. The hardware cloth you'll have to lay the eggs down, so you'll fit more eggs into a layer of chicken mesh if you stand them all upright. But um, the only draw side is. The chicken mesh that's currently available is of, of a fairly large diameter, so I'm not sure if the chicken, if the quail eggs are going to fall through or if they, if they're large enough not to fall through. So I haven't purchased that as yet, but um, waiting for them to arrive, then I'm going to possibly take one or two of the one, one or two of the quail eggs and. We go measure it and then select the cloth. Uh, either that or uh, it's just gonna go unplanned, completely unplanned, and just we'll make a plan as we go along. Uh, there's a lot of things that I can utilize. I'm pretty uh, resourceful uh, when it comes to putting things together and making a plan uh, for very cheap monies. Uh, but that's the update of the quails. Also, I'm going to show you, um, okay, after the egg handling videos, I'm going to take you through my process of how difficult it is to actually find fertile eggs in South Africa. Um, you see, you guys overseas, like everyone overseas, I know in the States, in the United, in the USA, you guys have um, Mare Magmare uh, hatcheries. You guys can buy fertile eggs of every variety, every kind. You guys can buy day old chicks of every variety every kind in box loads in boxes of of in, in box load quantities and in south africa we stuck with meat birds um and of course egg laying birds but even with the meat with the meat birds i mean you we, we aren't priv privileged enough to get um f1 breeding stock direct from cob uh, or F1 breeding stock directly from Ross. Uh, the way in the States you guys can order cob chicks and Ross chicks or cob eggs and Ross chicks directly from cob and Ross uh, from the F1 breeding stock of the latest or the current, uh, the newest generation or the newest bloodline. Uh, so with South Africa, a lot of our bloodlines are very filtered down, very watered down. Uh, most of the time, if you if you ordering meat bird eggs here in South Africa, even if you're on the grey market, most of the time you don't know whether it's a Ross, whether it's a cob, whether it's a mixed breed between the Ross or cob, or whether it's a mixed breed between a silver line and a cob, or a silver line and a Ross. Uh, it's also uh, like there's no uh there's no none of the latest bloodlines here so i mean uh, you know if you're looking at like highline if you're looking at cob or ross it's okay especially with highline it's not the latest um parent stock uh so yeah we in regards to first world farming uh or even second world farming south africa is a ways behind um we still got a lot of catching up to do we still have a lot of uh research to be done we've got uh we've got a lot of um upcoming uh, 
previously disadvantaged community community members uh, who are only getting into farming now. They have their parents have lots of land, but they've been given lots of land, but they haven't utilized it. Their parents weren't rich enough or wealthy enough to utilize it. Um, of course, farming is big money. You need big money input uh, to get big money output. And unfortunately, with farming, it's most of the time, unless you, you're really intelligent about the way you're farming and what you're farming and how you're farming, uh, that's the unfortunate truth of the matter is that you need a large capital investment for you to make a large, uh, to make, for you to make large profit margins every day or large revenue every month, uh, so you can focus on big scale instead of just small scale and just getting by and doing just the normal menial, day to day things. They just, I mean, that's just menial and day to day. And um, I can tell you how exciting and purposeful uh, menial and day to day can get. Uh, not very so yeah uh whole thumbs for all the upcoming previously disadvantaged black people in this country i hope you guys get uh lots of capital uh lots of knowledge and also wisdom to to start farming um to utilize the land correctly to to become farmers i mean uh, five of our top conglomerates or in southern africa uh, are all white conglomerates uh they all mainly white investors and white farmers who buy who, who i mean it's all one big white uh, a circle of white people that are supplying white people and uh, that's it um and unfortunately that's the case because like i said you know for the past 500 years i mean black people have been impoverished in, in southern africa ever since the, uh, the ever since white people arrive, have arrived in africa um, there hasn't been like rich black people until like the last 80 years, possibly. I mean, if you look as, as early back as this is 200 years ago, 150 years ago when diamonds were discovered in South Africa, uh, you hear of the Oppenheimers, you hear of Cecil John Rhodes, you hear of uh, all the French companies that opened up diamond mines. I mean, this country is full of black people. You never... In the history of diamonds, until the past 30 years, you've never heard of uh, a company name or a, a diamond company or a diamond dealer or a diamond company that was headed by a black person's surname until recently. So recently, I mean, of course, now, uh, you know, you get uh, there's lots of uh, talk was diamonds and um, there's um, there's a lot of black owned diamond companies but like that's only in the 20 years the past 20 years past 30 years um so uh yeah not taking away anything from the black people or the black nation or this country i know uh, it's uh everyone's only come into education um tertiary into education uh 30 years ago um the newer generation all now have professional jobs um careers Actual professionals, yeah. I mean, so, like, uh, sometimes I have to ask. I mean, I, you know, before it was, you could. I'm talking like twenty years ago when I was growing up. You could never, you could never look to a black man. To ask him for career advice. Um. It was unheard of, especially I mean, as an Indian guy from a Indian Muslim community, for you to ask a professional black person for career advice or um, advice regarding your own career it's uh, just unheard of and it doesn't unheard of it was even unthought of uh, you could never it was like almost a taboo just like an unspoken taboo in our communities and um, that dynamic has changed uh, it's changed so much we uh, a lot of the black people have careers now and they have money and they're utilizing their money to gain more wisdom and open more businesses and start their own conglomerates and start their own groups of companies. So it's good. We, we're heading in the right, in the correct direction, yeah? We're heading in the right direction. Uh, yeah, so with regards to farming and stuff, uh, I'm going to show you why it's so difficult to get fertile 
eggs of any sort or any nature in South Africa, but that's a separate video. We're going to do an entire video on that. Um, yeah, so sorry uh, for the long intro. Um, <clears throat> let's do some egg handling and let's see how far the egg embryos have progressed. It's grown. <coughs> so the little embryo has grown quite substantially here. Yeah? You can see how large the embryo is. So that's egg one, pretty dope. There's egg number two. 